Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy, Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football guys. It worked. Oh, my goodness, it worked. Uh, let's wake them up and make sure they're ready to rock and roll. Um, sorry, I am actually a little bit dusty here right now. Um, I've been uh, at my day job taking care of my day job and everything else. And so I wanted to get in here because, of course, uh, after being on the road and things, we got some breaking news. What? The owner is on live right now. Oh, is he? Okay. Um, let's see if we can go to that. Let's see. Fred Smith here told us the B&H photo helped change his life. Fred, okay, tell us your story. The time and uh, there's plenty of, of possible candidates in this area. Okay. Rob and then Bo Wolf. Jeffrey, Eagles fans are very passionate. You know <laughs> that. The overwhelming feeling, the overwhelming sentiment among fans is that the biggest problem with this team has been talent evaluation. Now, based on some of your responses when we've asked about Howie, it seems you don't agree with that. But when you look at the draft record, it's been poor. When you look at one Pro Bowl player drafted in the last seven years, how do you feel about that aspect of it? Because it's not that difficult to make a Pro Bowl. And how do you justify Ooh. not making changes in terms of talent evaluation? Or are you considering making changes and maybe giving someone like John Dorsey he looks more sad. say or someone else in the building more say when it comes to the draft. He looks sad. So I think the best way to look at it is you've got to look at every aspect of drafting and talent acquisition. And if you're making short-term decisions or you have a veteran team or you're uh, specifically focusing on one position or things like that, or a l lower volume of picks, there's no, no, uh, uh, there's no reason to not, look forward in having excellent success in this area. Um, but you're not. Uh, we've, we've over the last uh, 10, 15 years had had a lot of success, a lot of success winning divisions, mm -hmm. winning, uh, being in NFC championship games. Mm -hmm. I think one, one fourth of the time I've been owner in the last 20 years, we've appeared in an NFC championship game. That's hard to do without really good talent. And so, I would say that so yeah, going back we can to the do better McNabs. every single aspect, and I'm okay. as critical as any fan. I trust me, as Deflect. critical as any fan, uh, and and look at it in a very complex way, mm -hmm. and it's a data driven way. It's looking at what could have been, what should have been, mm -hmm. and uh, but I will uh, match mm -hmm. our performance uh, uh -huh. against most any organization, and yeah. know that it's because of really good talent on the roster so uh there's other ways of looking at it uh but when you have a veteran okay i'm gonna stop right there because I, I i don't I'm, i've get enough of my cowboys uh stuff but basically if you're just tuning in um the eagles said to doug peterson after they heard his plan um after they heard his plan they basically went this route with them Ooh, yeah, Doug Peterson, you're fired. Screw you, you're fired. So you got Jeffrey Lurie right now going on and everything else, and you saw him well, with that brief clip. He deflects about Howie Roseman. Now, now here's the good news. I talked to Philly 500. You know, he, he was feeling sick yesterday, so sick that he couldn't live stream. And I, I believe what it is is he's got the bird flu. The eagle bird flu is what he's got that they literally have made him sick sick to, you know, whatever you, I mean, he's, he's just disgusted. He's got fever. He's just kind of like, Hank, 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 you know, he, he, he's losing it. But 
now that Doug Peterson, who came in with a lame plan to try and fix things and literally getting rid of the golden child, Carson Wentz, was not in his, uh, you know, he, he didn't want to keep him. He didn't want to keep him. So I started thinking about, with him being let go, that what they're going to be looking for for the Eagles is somebody who can definitely pump up Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz has a confidence issue, and they need a coach and a quarter, you know, maybe a former quarterback who can do great things with his ego, make him feel good. And so I was thinking, what better person to get him together than former quarterback Dan Orlovsky? Dan, let, let me show you a highlight of one of the great moves Dan Orlovsky's had. He's back to pass. He ran out of the end zone safety. Dan Orlovsky forced out of the end zone by an on-charging Jared Allen. 2-0 Vikings. Oh, okay. Dan Orlovsky maybe should be a candidate for the Philadelphia Eagles. Because let me go on about some of the things that Dan Orlovsky has said about Carson Wentz sake of the stupidity of this i brought glasses because apparently anybody who voted for this list needs glasses mm -hmm. because you need to watch some tape watch to some realize what good players look like and what bad players look uh -huh. like second of all i am convinced that this list was made by dominique foxworth or <laughs> mina kimes or marcus Spurs. you know what max kellerman max kellerman made this list because this list stinks <laughs> not Carson Wentz. Wentz not being on the top 100 list this this is why this is what happened because he's not new he's not the new fat it's like it's like greenie when you go to a barbecue nowadays and everyone's like here come try this <laughs> amazing finger food it's great and you look at it you're like wait it's feta cheese watermelon and mint just give me pigs in a blanket or when you're sitting <laughs> around with your friends and they're like look I got this great app we can play on my phone we could play a game just, just put down Scrabble or Taboo okay. and let me bust your head in that. Or like, okay. when you're sitting around with your family and friends and everyone's like, man, play this song. It's the greatest song ever. No, just put on Frank Sinatra and let it ride and let me have my glass of red wine. The, 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 the newness of some players has taken away the vision of what great players look like. 2017, he's third in the league. And last year, he's not in your top 100. Last year, he's got a better completion percentage. He threw for a thousand more yards. Yard per attempt is just about the same, and yards per game about the same. How can a guy go from third to not in your top 100 when he did more last year than he did the previous two years when you ranked him at third? It doesn't make any sense. I believe Max Kellerman is behind this, or Mina Kimes is behind this, and I will not stand for this buffoonery. All right, so what better person NFL expert than Dan Orlowski to be the new head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. If you're looking for a guy that is going to be all in on Carson Wentz, and Lord knows he is all in on Carson Wentz, why not take a shot at Dan Orlowski? He literally looks at tons and tons of film. He knows what he's talking about. He even remembers when Quincy Carter went to the Super Bowl with the Dallas Cowboys. That's right. That's Dan Orlowski. And definitely could be a great coach for the Philadelphia Eagles. And I'm hoping, I'm praying that that guy, that he's definitely on the radar. But let's go back to Jeffrey Lurie and see what else he's got to say. You're going to have many fewer starters coming from uh, the draft and elsewhere. But listen, your words are not uh, unheard. They're, they're heard by me. Uh, and I feel like we've got an excellent I think he's actually reading the chat. area. And I would look forward to us uh, having real success uh, as we retool through talent acquisition and through coaching. Hmm. And the second part of that, as far as John Dorsey or someone else, would you consider that? Or is that something that's not in the equation right now? Wow. No, I think that, uh, listen, all the people we have, uh, whether it's Andy Weidel, John Dorsey, Brandon Brown, all those guys, very, mm -hmm. very capable guys. Um, Jeremiah Washburn, mm -hmm. these are all very, very capable people. Um, so uh, the more I think they'll be very included, it's a very collaborative process. And, uh, you know, that I'm very pleased we have 
excellent people in that operation. Okay. We'll wrap it up here with Bo. Last question. Hey Jeffrey, how much work uh, were you able to do on potential candidates over the past week or so as you were weighing this, this decision? And then comparing you know, this opening to the other openings on the market uh, where they might have a better quarterback situation or more cap space or, or more young talent or uh, right or wrong, less of a perceived clash with the Dan front office potentially. Orlowski. What is the selling point for, for this job as compared to the others? Yeah, great question. I, I um, First of all, I think it would be a very, very attractive job because if I'm a coach, the first thing I want to know is you're going to have as much resources as possible mm -hmm. to create a successful team. Are the facilities good? What's the organization's track record over the last 10, He's 20 talking, years? but he ain't saying nothing. Uh, are they a team that rarely makes the playoffs? Are they a team that's satisfied just to occasionally make the playoffs? Uh, how many division titles do they uh -huh. have? Um, do they ever get as far in the playoffs okay, the so way they conduct, build their roster? Sounds like is he just is just deflecting and not really saying anything. So that's what we got right now with the Eagles. I say Dan Orlowski is your man for the next coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Philly 500, I'm glad you're feeling better, buddy. Let me know. What do you think? Philly 500, come on. Talk to me, buddy. Peace.